computer. Hello, and welcome to another edition of He Said, She Said. Tonight's broadcast is based on the following. Well, forget that. We'll let Mercedes start it off with the introduction. So, today's topic on our podcast will be dating in 2018. What is the motive? Um, is it still about love as it used to be? Um, is there a different motive? What are people really dating for in this generation? Odie? Um, I think it's kind of interesting that you brought this up because especially like tying into what we talked about recently with dating apps, um, mm-hmm. I have never been so confused as to what a man wants. Like dating apps just seems to confuse things and muddy the waters a little bit more. Um, some some days I think I want like the traditional companionship and I think I'm looking for my Mr. Right. Um, and then other days I'm like, damn, I could just really use some dick right now. And then other days I'm just like, hmm, like maybe I just like somebody to have a plus one. Like, like I have a lot of girlfriends getting married right now. And I'm, when I say I'm genuinely happy for them, I am genuinely happy for them. However, the one thing that does make me anxious is like bringing plus ones to a wedding like damn i don't have like a permanent plus one and it would be nice to have like a guy to go on a vacation with instead of um just relying on girlfriends or like my mom to come as the plus one to a wedding like oh like those things are okay but that's not like my end game really is to have a permanent plus one that is one thing that has been consistent i'm not um i know mercedes you were you were chomping down a little bit on some good eats um, before before we started. And I know some women have said that they like to um, just go for a date, like be taken out to a nice meal and kind of be treated in that regard. But I, that's not, that's never been a motive for me. Um, I'm just not that beat for a meal out. Like, I don't understand why anybody would do that, but okay, to eat your own. Yeah, um, people definitely date for food nowadays. Just to like, go out and get a meal. Like, who's doing that? Apparently like, people. Like, in this generation, I'm like, you know, my thing is, I don't like wasting time. So, when I date, it's gonna, I'm dating for consistency. I would like for that person to be my end-all, be-all, so that I don't have to start over again. Now, granted, not every relationship works out that way. I don't know about you, but I'm single, and sometimes you have to start over. But at some point, for me, even after you, you go through and try to find your Mr. Right or your Mrs. Right or whomever, at some point, you want to find someone that's not just a plus one. He's a plus one consistently. Someone that's going to be there, maybe even live on the same roof one day, get married one day, do other things. The way I value the institution of marriage is a little bit different, So, but you got to get past the the modern day dating before you can even think about marriage nowadays. It's, it's a total different ball game out there. It's like marriage is like, it seems like it's like so far, it's like a needle in a haystack. The haystack is the dating and all the different guys. And then your husband's at the bottom, <laughs> you know, stuck in the ground. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's hard. Dating is actually yeah. a very hard that thing. Same, that same old analogy of kissing different frogs. I mean, it's mm-hmm. what it is. I just... <sighs> I just, and and when I say permanent plus one, like, I think those things, like, all encompass what our plus one is going to be. I don't want a plus one who's good with my girlfriends, like, go to weddings with, and then, but I can't bring to work, like, corporate events. And, like, the other plus, I don't want to have to have multiple plus ones, and, like, on some she's got to have it shit, like, different men to juggle in order to, like, make one whole one. I want a whole one. So that's what I mean by, like, permanent plus one like I want him to be my everything to be able to be diverse and able to go to all these different places so ideally that would work I think um kind of where I fuck up is um being a little too critical it's like if you do one thing that I deem a deal breaker then it's like I don't want to be bothered anymore and I don't know if I'm second chances I mean uh (laughs) I'm quick to cut them off. Like I, cause I, I overthink things and it's like, oh, well, if he's selfish in this way, then mm, he's not going to be a good husband or he's not going to be a good partner. Like what else does that lead to? And so like I connect too many dots and that probably hurts me to some extent, but I'm looking, I'm not going to stop looking just because, um, but that's, that's my angle. I just want a okay. good plus one. What, uh, and Van, we, we know that you're married, but what is your angle on 
I just like oh, if you have to get back out here at any point, what's your perspective? <laughs> so don't sorry. don't come back out here. We're swimming in the oh, water up oh, in sorry. here. The sea is here. You know, we're drowning out here, us single people. Listen, when I was dating my wife, when we started dating, I had maybe four or five other females that I was juggling while I was juggling my wife. But lo and behold, this is my, I say a man knows when he wants to marry somebody. A man knows who his wife's going to be. That's just a guy. I don't know about a woman, but a man knows because when I met my wife, two and a half weeks later, I cut every single female off that I was dating. So what about her? Like when it comes to these jokes nowadays, when it comes to everybody nowadays, they don't know how to distinguish what's good and what's bad, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Because okay. they, they, they deal with the drug dealer, but then they see a dude that's doing good, and oh, he's too nice. Maybe it's, maybe it's generational, because it's, it's been like this for a very, very long time. Like, yeah. he's the bad dude, oh, I want to date him, and oh, maybe I can change him. But then see this good brother down here doing what he need to do, taking care of his business, got an account, working, uh, pushing towards a, an objective. And, and, and no, he too nice. I can't deal with him. He too bougie or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to, like, my personal opinion is a woman changes a man. A man doesn't change a woman. A woman is who she's going to be when you meet her. I think, I think most women like whether we be the home, the caregiver, the homebody, or whatever we already are when you meet us, we are what we're going to be consistently. It's the man who might have to like, oh, he was a player. It's time for me to settle down. I think I found my queen normally. But I don't, I honestly, I feel like just in general, people in general don't change. They adapt. So with that being said, yes. Yeah. With that being said, it's more like, women we don't have to change as much because we are just who we are i think men have a more of like a playground you know getting to right. the point where they know sense. who they want to be with you guys and then you guys have so many options you know so many women and then we outnumber you guys anyway worldwide we outnumber like, you guys I, I know that i had to like i know i'm personally i can be a pure d asshole when i feel like it. just pure pure yeah. asshole. <laughs> and i had to tweak my asshole for my wife yeah so now my wife knows like when it comes when it comes to like certain things like customer service people and stuff like that my wife knows i can turn my ass off like turn on like oh let me you can talk to my husband and and it'll go on them and so i can vent just so i can get somebody else instead of getting my wife so so it's, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting that you say that though like um I was thinking about, well, two things that you said um, that I want to address just about, or actually Mercedes said it, just about um, when, um, like, first of all, if anybody believes or reads the Bible, we all know the saying of when a man finds a wife, it's a good thing. But I've always, always said this, that if, if I made 2018's resolution to say, I'm going to find a husband, the odds of me actually going out and finding a husband slim to would be slim compared to a man who says, oh, in 2018, I'm going to find a wife. Like, a woman's always going to be, for the right man, always going to be ready to go to the next stage of things. And that's what I don't understand. It just seems like... I got to disagree with you. I got to. The reason why I say that is because when I met my wife, I wasn't looking for a wife. Wasn't. But, no, but see, but listen you to what I'm saying. Have- if, you, if you put your mind to it and you said... I want to, I'm like, obviously that wouldn't apply to you, but if a man said, I'm going to get married tomorrow or in the next six months or the next year, I want to find a wife. Mm -hmm. He could easily get a, like a woman could go and be a great woman and be eligible and all like be wifely, um, you know, and eligible in that regard and still not find a husband. It's, it's really on the man. So it's, it's like, I can't say what the men are looking for. But I know what they're not looking for. <laughs> well, I think it's because the man, he's the, you know, he's the hunter anyway. Normally, the man is the one who, you know, like, for example, and it was a good analogy, like um, sperm and egg. The sperm goes to find the egg. It's just how it works. It's not 
I don't think it's meant for us to do that. Back to like another topic that me and right. a couple of my friends had, like women proposing. Is that normal? Is that natural? I think there are just some things that men are still, they're, they're here to do. And we have to just let them do that. And finding the wife and us not going out to find a husband, it, that's why it's kind of unnatural. Me, I know a lot, a lot of people probably crazy because I believe in polyamory and all sorts of stuff. But when it comes down to that, traditionally, I'd much rather my husband come to me. I'd much rather him find me. I'd much rather him propose to me. And it has nothing to do with, yeah, I'm all for that strong woman and independent female and I can do this and do that and I can conquer everything a man can. I'm fine with that on certain things. But when it comes to my man choosing me, I don't want to push him. I don't want to nag him. I don't want to beg him. I don't want to put him in a yeah. situation where he has to propose to me. If you want to marry me, do that. I can only imagine that shit just would go left anyway. Like the first argument of our relationship is going to sound like, oh, like I ain't want to marry your ass. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to marry your ass anyway. Like if you wouldn't have begged me or you wouldn't have gotten pregnant, nigga, I wouldn't even be here. I don't have time for none of that. So I already know that I'm not going to set myself up in that position. Um, But the other thing, just going back real quick to what Van said about um, (laughs) like your wife being um, not your not like somebody to check you but just understanding like your strengths and and things like that um did y'all okay did y'all hear the the show that happened in dc uh what's the dj's name did you guys see that oh fuck what's i can't remember the dj's name but the bottom line is okay there was um one of his co-hosts on this radio show is a married woman and she had like recently been like looking for a nanny and she goes back and tells her also married co-host, the man, like, Hey, um, I'm not going to hire this girl because I think she's too pretty. And I would never like bring this, like this girl into my house. That's not the crazy part. The crazy part is that they bring bring the, like the nanny that they, that she did not hire onto the show without her knowledge um, or consent. And basically like the girl confronts her like oh like why would you not hire me just because of my looks blah 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 and of course the co-host who did not hire her felt attacked and betrayed um and she quit like right there on the air and the wife of the dj of the man dj calls in and basically cusses his ass out and is like i mean he was like really defensive um and just like talking shit to her like oh I don't know why you would feel that way and we told you that this was gonna happen but when his wife got on the phone his whole demeanor his whole shit changed and she was like I would cuss your ass out too and I'll punch you in the face if you did x y and z you know I don't blame her and she like really stuck up for the female co-host which I just thought was interesting because it made me think I mean <laughs> that goes me back to like insecurity man's, yeah like, well like, I don't know insecurity. like to me that wasn't what I was focusing on but yeah that could probably be a whole episode in and of itself but um I just think it's interesting that when you have the right partner you know what strengths to play off of and you know when to tone it down and like who's in the right like or who not who wears the pants but who's (laughs) more affirmed mine's is always happy wife happy life (laughs) well see that's another thing I that concept I don't think is fair why because you guys deserve to be happy too you shouldn't have to always conform to what the woman wants just to keep a smile on her face she should be able to conform to what you want just as much to keep you happy because that means you're settling and that's not fair it's not i don't care i if i tell you you know i want you to take out the trash i want you to paint i want you to do this i want you to do that i want you to fuck me a certain type of way i want you to do so many things for me what am i bringing to the table for you What is Mercedes going to do for you as a spouse on the other side? Because once you're meeting all these needs of mine, you're drained at the end. Happy wife, happy life sounds pretty nice as long as hubby is happy as hell too and you're meeting every last one of his needs. It's 100-100, not (laughs) 50-50. Happy wife, happy life is not up there. Oh, well, shit, if that's how you feel, let me get down on my one knee right now. (laughs) want to say that shit to be honest i'm just being real I, that's how i feel when everyone when anyone, any, when anyone says it i'm like no 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 the wife and the husband should be happy equally it's not something where it's a 75 25 thing or even a 50 50 thing it's 100 100 you 100 percent get in return what you give to keep each other happy whether it's sexually financially and everything else 
there's I don't want I don't want to be happy knowing that he's doing everything for me and possibly miserable when he lays in the bed beside me at night because maybe I didn't give him oral when he wanted or maybe I didn't cook his favorite dinner maybe I didn't do something no I'm gonna make sure hey you know what let me like steak and potatoes with his thick ass let me make him that today because he damn wants it he did everything else for me he went and picked up clothes for the kids this week because I asked him to well let me do something for him let me rub his feet you guys will rub our feet rub our back when do we do the same thing for you and yes that makes me happy to have my back rub while I'm eating my favorite food duh but you guys deserve the same thing Van <laughs> has no objections. <laughs> <laughs> he just gonna he gonna like just play that one little part back for his wife. Okay, got it. Um, <laughs> she gonna kick him out the house. Nah, she ain't gonna. Nah. Kick him out. I don't nah. think she so. seems like she's very well rounded, but most right. people be like, "Damn, what you tell me that for?" But yeah, but it's it's just um, only fair. Me, the thing is, you gotta remember the husbands are human too. They deserve everything that we deserve. So deserve I mean, but how do we how do we get there though? It just seems like we've arrived before we have taken the journey. I don't understand how to get there. Like as somebody, um, I was reading a book and they were saying that um, women tend to think in terms of like, okay, like formulaic, like in a formulaic way. Like if I do this, then I get that. If I do this, then this happens. So it's like love just does not happen that way. And if your end game is love, like how do you get there? Like what? Well, what does that look like? Like what? I I feel like it's supposed to just happen organically. Like you're just supposed to know, and that kind of goes back to what Van was saying. It's it's well, at least for me, I've never been personally attracted to the bad boy. I've never. I always knew that they weren't gonna be shit. I never liked them. <laughs> like when I was young, and I of course as an adult, I I definitely stay away. However, I have known plenty bad, of bad boy. What I've I've do? known plenty of sir. No. <laughs> so I've known plenty of like quote unquote good guys though um who look great on paper but there's just no chemistry there. It's not that I'm like away from him because he's not a bad boy or it's just like but you're so blah. And I've talked to um a, so, a coworker about this. Too. She, she said the same thing. She she said that she had a very like um nice date or nice couple of dates with this guy. But he was just not he was just boring and not engaging and it just didn't click for whatever reason. Yeah. Doesn't mean yeah, that he's a bad guy. I've been, di I've been different. I've noticed that the ones who aren't the bad guys, they're not the drug dealers. They're the ones who dress nice. Um, probably work at a call center and drive a Camaro. I would suppose, but they're probably, they're the ones that are more so out there. They do more. They're they're They look clean on the outside, but their mentality and their, personality isn't the same back to that whole you know one person being happy like one person's happiness like for like for example for the um analogy i'm trying to make right now but like you meet that good the one that looks good on the outside he isn't the bad boy he's in the drug dealer he ain't from the hood he ain't the thug or whatever but yet he's happy out here bouncing between these women and he wants to make a makeshift relationship with you well you're happy doing that what about my needs i want you to be faithful i want you to do this i want you to do that Who's to say you can't get what you're missing from a bad right. boy? He doesn't necessarily have to have drugs, sell drugs to be a bad boy. He could have gotten into some trouble growing up. He could have been, you know, a lot of things. And maybe he just needs that woman to, you know, conform him to be a little bit, you know, more, less rugged around the edges. I don't know if I necessarily painted like a picture of what a bad boy is. I'm definitely associating it with some sort of like criminal activity. When I say bad boy, um, I don't know what he looks like, but I do know. I don't have time for projects either. I don't have I don't, time to go sit in jail and visit nobody talking about some ride or die. I ain't got time. I don't have time. Yeah, it's like a project. Like, okay, like if you if you are feeling me, you should show me that you changed. I should not have to be like somehow feeling like, oh, I can be your motivation to change. Like you should change for yourself because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be here forever. And so you need to learn how to function for your own success. But that's why I said I people just, don't change, they adapt. They just adapt to and th whatever situation may be. He might, he might, like, oh, well, she's looking for a good guy type, and I'm a bad boy type, so I'm, a, you know, dress differently, carry myself a little bit differently. 
but he might be on the back end still hanging in the hood behind your back with his homeboys around activity that he shouldn't but he can't that's not him being himself that's back to that one person being happy with the situation it's not fair if he's a bad boy and that's what he wants to be fine he just may not be for you what are you you know just as a woman who's looking for that bad boy trying to change him don't change him find the type of guy that you want they're like again i'm just i guess life is so short and i know that i'm going to be exactly who i am so i don't want to try to change anybody i'm gonna either accept you for exactly what who and what you are there are little things that you can ask somebody to change like um like maybe you know let me teach you how to you know not spend money so much and just you know just little things like that but actual personality mm -mm, you can't change that once he's a, once he's this bad boy or even the good looking guy on the outside but the hole in the background he's gonna be exactly who he is he's not gonna change he's gonna conform just long enough to get you to believe that he's what you've been looking for i, I don't know well listen i was a well I, not even was a, yeah i was <laughs> a bad dude i really can say that i was because i've done the gang banging i've been locked up before uh did the drug dealer thing didn't they done that and um, I just grew up. Yeah. That's just bottom line. I just grew up. And um, my wife knows I still don't take, I don't take shit from nobody. My, uh -uh. That's not going to happen. I still will carry a gun. And if you, you get out of line, I'm going to show you when you're going to move on. I'm, I, I'm still that guy. But um, it's just a tweak. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, when they call people OG, they, jokers like me, they turn into OGs because we know how to conform our, our anger and our our, our bad boyness if you want to call it you know what i'm saying so we know what to do like we know when to not get in trouble when to knock some, when to lay a nigga out and when not to lay him out you know what i'm saying we yeah. know what to avoid. it's about control it's all about control it's, it's, it's the control issue you know what i'm saying so jokers grow up turning to ogs ogs is always the ones that's like nah i'm good i mean yeah i think we all change when we get old <laughs> like i would like like i said like i'm went, you know back to the whole like polyamory thing by the time i'm gonna want to do this anyway my kids are gonna be out of the house and graduating and stuff like that so it's like that change would be different for me. I would be, you know, doing that differently than I am here now. Matter of fact, I was having a conversation with this um, in a group of mine, um, like a little Snapchat group that we got going. And that change is actually still typically what I want now. I just can't do it because of my situation. Like I said, I wouldn't really be changing or asking my, new, my partner for anything different. I'd just be able to do it and actually accept it as my lifestyle once i've raised my children there's nothing that i want to hide my children from or anything like that and it's, a, it's just a choice many people may not be into it which i totally get and it's hard to find a partner that is into it so it'll be me finally getting to do what i want to do in my 30s when my kids are graduated respectfully so, so it's not changing i'm just you know meeting a goal or getting to a goal that i want it See, like a few weeks ago, when it comes to like kid, like dating in, in general, a few weeks ago I was having a conversation with my niece, and my niece is part of this like bubble generation that just doesn't get it. And she's dating this kid that is kind of reminds me of myself, but he's a little bit different because he's got like she said that she seen him hanging around a bunch of dude, like maybe it's, I don't know, hanging around a bunch of guys, and 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 one of those like dude was a transsexual so i don't like i don't get I, this generation in general I don't, when it comes to them and wanting to be with somebody because like i said it maybe it's just it's a generational thing is where people just, they go around and laps and go around in circles and still go back to the same exact thing that they see when they see their mom or dating somebody or when they see their dad dating this person. So I, I, my personal opinion is I think it's just a generational circle and they're just doing it different. Yeah. And this, and like I said, just getting to know someone nowadays, just period. It's, it's, it's definitely different. It's, it's like, I watched my mom date growing up and it was totally different. Like they handle things differently than we I do. do I do have a question though, um, Van. I mean, you while you are not in the dating pool, um, you're still dating. So I do want to know what the end game looks like for you and your wife. Like, are you guys working on proactively um, 
dating mm -hmm. each other? Like, do you have date nights? Or I watched this really cute video actually of a couple earlier, and it was like an advertisement. I, for I forgot what the show was called, but they basically their date night consisted of making a pizza at home. Like they went to the grocery store picked out all the ingredients that they wanted for their pizza and then they proceeded to go out to like a fancy pizza restaurant to compare their pizza that they made at home and then decide which one was the better date well so it was like a two for one thing so i was just wondering like but what i'm a i'm a, I'm a spontaneous kind of individual i do outlandish shit i'm saying i like the skydiving we've done indoor skydiving um i want to go whitewater rafting like real extreme crazy shit that she's not used to doing. That's that's the shit that I like to do. But um, we're gonna be getting rid of this little monster here and sending her to her grand her, her grandparents, and we're gonna have uh, a whole maybe like a month of just me and her. So we don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna be doing something. Like I seen some stuff that's in Arizona that I, that I kind of dig. Like there's a um. A, 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 pool in arizona that's just pure yeah water. yeah the falls i that, saw that that's that shit is a long ass hike <laughs> i ain't worried about a hike my yeah, wife is good. worried about the hike and not me but um I, that's something i want to do i also like i want to go get my my jumping equipment so i can go jump out of a plane again if you had to like put um put some sort of like stock or a percentage to how important dating your spouse um, contributes to the success of your relationship how much like what number would you put on that 20 percent 30 percent 35 percent 35 percent okay oh, 30 oh, 35 on the um, importance of dating in a marriage yeah. dating in a marriage you yeah. you got to because if you don't date but, your but i feel like 35 that's a small number like i feel well, like dating and when that, you're married listen, also dating, because yeah. I've been married before and then too, there's the other parts of dating that's what I'm saying. There's, <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that I'm just saying. I think that that's a small number. I like. I feel like when you're married, I've been married before, and it was like the things that I wanted to do. I felt like would have been like almost like eighty percent of what a relationship should have been. Of course, I was married to a hoe, so whatever. But it's like I didn't get to do half of what I wanted to do. The sexual part wasn't even, you know, an enjoyment after a while because. We weren't dating. We weren't doing anything like to keep the the whole situation alive. We were just coexisting, and that's when the thirty five percent is. We only got thirty five percent. I don't want to get thirty five percent. I want more. I want. I don't know who this dude was, but you said he was a hoe. That means he wasn't done with his hoe and way. Yeah, I also would be curious to know though, like what your wife would say though like how much stock she get back to us on that because i would love to know what she thinks um because you're in the same relationship so it's comparing like actual apples to apples like it'd be really interesting to see like yeah which what her as, as a woman i think dating while while married i think we put more and everything fresh more numbers on it i think we would yeah i think we would i, I don't i can't say to me interesting. Interesting. and then and eighty percent comes with whether it be sex, doing spontaneous things, going places, spending time together. That other little twenty percent are the maintenance things like paying bills and taking care of the kids and all that stuff. That's that's outside the dating. Yeah, For us to maintain this marriage. I'm, I'm not a scheduling type of individual. I'm saying if I see something like I that's where I'm going. Okay. Okay, Blue, you've been kinda of quiet over there. What's your perspective of dating nowadays? You are. Right. I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, because, you know, I'm a little older now. Um, I mean, I would be dating for a purpose, but I don't know. I don't really have an opinion. I'm asexual. Okay. <laughs> Every time he says that. Okay. Well, so. In my practice, I find that people date for a number of reasons. I would say, um, mainly for sex or to fulfill a want or a need or something. I know females that do it for financial secure, security, food or entertainment. I know dudes that do it to relieve boredom or sex. You know what I'm saying? I might've been that dude at one time. Um, now to relieve boredom, I eat Krispy Kreme donuts or Chick-fil-A cookies. You dig what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay, asexual. 
when it's all said and done, though, I mean, I just don't think that people are where they're supposed to be or where they should be. But then again, who would we to say that, that that's what the case is? Because society morphs and it changes, and it seems like we're getting away from what used to be core values, and values are redefined over time. The things that are accepted now were not accepted 10, 20 years ago. Homosexuality was a um, was a mental health disorder in the DSM-3. We're now on the DSM-5. So we're talking about two modifications of the DSM book in which homosexuality was defined as a mental health symptom or diagnosis, a severe one at that. And now it's just like hunky-dory. You can see two, two cats kissing each other right here in the lounge right now. Or two ladies sitting right here talking about how invested they are in their marriage and loving up and showing all kind of PDA. Even when I was in a relationship, you never, it would rarely, rarely ever see me show PDA unless I was like head, head, head crazy, head over heels, or just drunk as fuck when I used to drink, but I don't drink anymore. Let me drunk ask you this, Blue. Um, I was going to ask you like what you would do though if you caught on or suspected um, that a woman was dating you solely for the purpose of getting a meal. Like, like, would you keep treating her like in the efforts that she would just eventually fall in love with you? Or would you be like, look, would you call her on her shit? Like what would happen? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, I ain't as nigga one two no nah, i would not you only get so many dates before i get the plate you dig when i'm saying west coast Compton for life full city um no that's fine that's fine <laughs> i mean i don't know i mean you get a feel if you're really in tune with yourself and you're in tune to what the other person is you ex you know looking at their body movements the way they talk you know what's what from what you don't need to be three four days i don't know let's say you're on the date and you find out I'm, I'm just putting you in a completely hypothetical situation. Yeah, day, second day, is date, is I date two. The man, just by my experience of the man, of the is, person, you know what I'm saying? It's date two, and she's like, and she and you ask her, hey, um, what do you like about me? What have you liked about spending time with me so far? And then she says, um, I really enjoy eating out with you. <laughs> like, I'm honest, kidding. rude as fuck, but honest. And then, what what does Blue do in that situation? I'm just curious. <laughs> it, I, at first, I appreciate yeah. the honesty is so rare in this day and time. This broadcast brought to you by Subway, who has amazing um happy happy meals every day of the week, a new sandwich every day of the week. I'll um, feature sandwich three fifty per day, different sandwich every day of the week, three fifty at Subway. You get these cookies for three for dollar nineteen. Anyway, like I was saying. <laughs> Oh my god. You ain't gonna do shit but keep sitting there eating like you're eating that damn cookie. That's why <laughs> you talking heavy, but I think you was you was still keeping the middle. I'm really I'm really I gotta be the asshole. I gotta be. And I pay that for conversation. I pay for a meal for conversation. I love conversation. I love sitting in front of somebody and just absorbing their essence. It all depends. I don't know. I gotta be the asshole. I got to. Like the best thing you can do for me. I love it. Listen, what are you listen, gonna do, man? Listen, if I was in the dating world and somebody said that shit to me, all right, fool. As long as I'm feeding you, can I go fuck you? What? Give I'm feeding you. Get it ass. If I'm feeding you, I'm fucking. Sorry. Mm. If you said that to me. If somebody said like that, if somebody said that out loud to me, if I'm feeding you, we gotta go. We gotta, I got. Listen, I'm gonna be like a sugar daddy. When you gonna give me that ass? Oh shit, bam. Oh, if I get yeah. this out, Blue that lost himself. Some, with that. that might be some last meals, I guess. I don't know. But Blue, Blue lost himself with that. Blue, uh, listen, if I was in the dating game, I was I'll be rude about everything. Because I don't need mm -hmm. to be nice. That's true, because a lot of people out here dating aren't nice. They do use people for food. They do use people oh. for financial gain. They do use people for that sex. Is. So if I know that you're using me to feed you, uh uh. Uh uh. Well, it's the same thing. Just like a lady, be like, if I know you're feeding me to fuck me, uh, no, I mean, you know, it's whatever. You know what? That relationship will last a lot longer if everybody was honest. Hey, I want you to feed me. Hey, I want you to fuck me. Everybody's full. Yeah. Honesty is the best gift you can give me. And consistent honesty, because then I have to throw in that word consistent. That is, that is um my my number one challenge. Just um. I'm not getting a lot of consistency out here. Um, 
you get guys that say I'm outgoing. Um, <laughs> my favorite are honestly are the ones that say I, um, you got to have a passport ready to rock with me. But then I ask you about like your last vacation and you tell me it was like Charlotte for CIAA. I'm like, but we live in Raleigh. Like that's, that's cute, but that's not like, that's hardly a vacation or like travel. Um, and like in your last few trips or something like that. Um, yeah, the last yeah, I was like, dating, I asked him to get a passport. I was like, if you could please get a passport, we're going somewhere. Now it didn't yeah. last long enough to get where I think the passport came after we broke up. That's how short it was. Damn. Damn. That's oh, like, God. No, it was, yeah. yeah, he, it was probably about three or four months, but I just, whatever. I just mean the shit is not matching like what they think they are. Um, it's not matching the reality, and that's very frustrating. I, Sometimes people I think, they put forward what they want to be or how they want to be, and they want to manifest that in that relationship, and maybe it just don't pan out. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I need I you to be self-aware of like who you are, what your actual strengths are, what your actual actual weaknesses are, not where you want to be. Um, and my permanent plus one will know this. So we'll see. Yeah. That's right. She will. He will. <laughs> don't don't play me. Not Blue that basically just wrong. said no. Not that there's anything wrong with liking the females, but that is not my. That is not how I roll. No, I just no. tell you. No, you're gonna get that more from a female than you are a male. Is all I'm saying. I mean, not for the most part. I mean, what you want is kind of rare in this day and time. Just based on what we call microwave pussy. You know what I'm saying? What Blue basically said is that after all this time being single, you're going to find out you're lesbian. That's what he said. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. Gosh. I say that. Yeah. Don't put no words in my mouth. You can put something else in my mouth, but don't put no words in my mouth. You dig I don't say his ass no mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're going to figure it out. No, but I mean, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if, if that is what it came to, but at the same time, regardless of what gender, dating is hard. That's why I have stuck with the same person. It, I met him a year ago in July. Oh, I, almost, almost a year ago in July. I said a year ago, like it's July. So, you know, July is coming up. And blah, 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 I wish. But yeah, it, it, it's just one of those July, things like where, yeah, I, I got a um, trip to the Dominican Republic in July. I cannot wait. I'm so hyped. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I wish it was July too. But, um, yeah. Vacation Bay. It, it, it's, it's time to like I don't know after we get past that one year point I don't know what it's going to be or what, what's going to happen I, I guess it progressively without saying it becomes something that's another thing with dating when do you ask what is it that's a hard one too yeah, like what are we doing communication should be so on point that you just know when you know you know what I know Pop it for life. Yeah. City. That, that sounds nice but I don't know. At some point, you got to know that you're not wasting your time. Now, granted, I don't ask. I never have. I don't want to. But at some point, you got to know, well, when are we, like, are we going to go from dating and just be, like, this weird dating period for, like, three years, and all of a sudden, you drop to your knee and propose to me? So when were we boyfriend and girlfriend? Now we're just all of a sudden engaged and about to be husband and wife? I, I think there has to be, like... Dating and don't have a clear definition of where you are after three years, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. Well... It's like, I guess, I don't know, without asking. Even since June 2017, that's a problem. Watch out now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see you next week. <laughs> and that concludes another episode of She Said, She Said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That don't conclude this episode. Odie, what you got? No, it's I was a creeping joke. out the conversation. I felt like I was like, you know, creeping in on a conversation. I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> don't worry. Blue, blue, he gonna, he gonna get it when I see him. <laughs> that's the plan. I know. That's what I was gonna say. You are right into that, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, that's, I mean, that's all I got. At the end of the day, my end goal, I'm, because one thing I can be consistent about is just a permanent plus one. Somebody that does not get on my nerves after two weeks of knowing them. <laughs> just a permanent okay. plus one that's very pleasant to be around. 
more often than not. That's my angle. Working on to get that happening. What am I working on to get that happening? Yeah. I'm going to like the meetups and paying attention to what's going on in the group me's and um the yacht group, which is the young Africans of the triangle. Shout out to Ghana having their 61st independence day this week but you know i like i'm sociable but i might have to relocate but that'll be something to be determined after i finish school i I think it's the city not necessarily um me per se but we'll see okay all right final words mercedes um don't be out here dating for uh Ridiculous reasons. Don't waste time. That's my biggest pet peeve. That's kind of more like a, I guess like a tip versus a final word. So don't do it. There you go. Van, any words for the people? <laughs> nah, I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that concludes another episode of He Said, She Said under the umbrella of the Urban Breakdown. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Urban Breakdown featuring hit shows such as He Said, She Said, 360 Degrees, Politics, and Black Man's Perspective. <clears throat> we look forward to talking to you again <laughs> soon. We look forward to possibly having you on one of these broadcasts. Until the next time, peace out.